What's up? I'm David Burns. Thanks for joining me today. Bees are doing some weird things. Are your bees doing some strange things on the front of their hives? Kind of weird looking. And some of you are kind of panicking, wondering what's going on. I've been asked this question the most. What's going on? Are my bees getting ready to swarm? Are they overcrowded? If I take my two supers off, will it crowd bees in there more? I don't understand why there's so many bees outside my hive. I'm going to explain these things. Let's get started right now. It's weird stuff. It makes you worried. I know you're concerned. Let me explain what's going on and if you really need to worry. Wow, I mean, what's going on there? A lot of bees all the way down on the bottom board, even hanging down below the bottom board. Look at that. wrapped around the hive. I mean, look at that. But hang on, even more. Look at that, wrapped around the back of the hive doing it. Now this is called washboarding. We really don't know what bees are doing when they do the washboard vibrating back and forth. Some people call it scrubbing the deck. What are they doing? We really don't know. As we take a look at the hive, what's going on? It's hot. It's humid. There's not a lot for my bees to forage on. A little bit, but goldenrod's not really blooming much yet. So there's a lot of bees in the hive, and they have to go outside because it's just too darn hot inside that box. It can overheat the developing pupae. So a lot of the bees are going outside the hive to relieve that internal heat pressure. Now, on the outside of the box, that's where it all gets weird. We see some bees hanging on the bottom board, hanging off in clusters. We see bees that are on the front of the box. They look like they're scrubbing the deck. You can see them with their tongue or their proboscis. They're rubbing the front of the box with their tongue. What's going on with that? Why are they doing that? They're going back and forth. It's called washboarding. It's called scrubbing the deck. And get this, none of us know why they do this. There's no endomologists, there's no scientists. We can guess, we can speculate that maybe they're so hot that the bees are having to go outside and do something, but we really don't know what they're doing. It could be a Nobel Prize if you figure out why bees are washboarding, what's going on. We know about the ages of the bee, that they're relatively young bees. Uh, we kind of know about the season in which they do it, the time of day they do it and all that, but for the life of us, no idea. When you see your bees washboarding and piling up on the front like this, it really doesn't mean they're going to swarm. A lot of people freak out and say there's not enough room, they're overcrowded, they're going to swarm. Only way you can tell if a, if a colony is going to swarm is by opening it up, checking the frames, looking for queen cells on the bottom of each frame. If you don't see that, they're not going to swarm. I would say this colony we're looking at today it's healthy, it's strong, it's got two supers on that need to be taken off and harvested, but they're not getting ready to swarm. They're just a lot of bees in a box and it's hot. Another question that you ask me all the time is, if I take the two supers off, forcing those bees into the two deeps, there's gonna be more bees crowded into two deeps that did have the two supers they could spread out into. What do I do now? Won't this make it worse? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Why not just do it briefly? Take the two supers off, harvest the honey, and put the wet supers right back on. Even if there's no nectar source in your area and there's no chance a golden rod's going to yield enough nectar for them to fill those two supers up, why not put it back on, let them work it, and just see? But keep in mind, if you're in the north like me and you get closer to winter, 
you're going to have to take the queen excluder off and you're going to have to pull those two honey supers off, especially if the bees do not cap them over. You don't want to leave two empty supers on because the bees may gravitate up into empty supers for food in the winter and there's nothing there. Now for me, I put on my winter bee kinds by taking both supers off if I harvest both. But in this hive, I'm going to take one super off, harvest it, enjoy the honey. I'm going to leave one super on and I'm going to put my winter bee kind right on top of that super for extra insurance that they'll have enough food for the winter. So before you freak out and think everything's gone wrong with my hive because look what's going on on the outside, eh, let's just calm down. It's a hot day. Just like in the old days when it gets hot, you get out on the porch, get a little breeze. It's just the bees cooling themselves off. Not much to panic about here other than you have a strong colony. You might want to check for mites before too long because they've had a lot of brood and a lot of brood means a lot of cycles that mites could develop on. So just because those bees are big in numbers right now, most of those bees, they only have about another 20 days of life left. In another 20 days, all the bees that we see flying and foraging and on the outside of the hive will be dead from being summer bees that only live 40 days. So our job now is to make sure we do our part in the months of August and September to raise bees of winter physiology. We need lots of brood development now because those are the bees, if we keep them healthy from viruses and if we keep them well fed, there'll be a lot of bees of winter physiology that'll make it through winter. Hey, thanks for joining me today. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I make a new video. I'll see you next time.